All right, another Wes Craven film. <laughs> yeah, no, nope, not that one yet. This is Deadly Blessing uh, from 1981. This is uh, much more of like a studio film. Um, mm. You know, we did get Summer of Fear before this, which was a made-for-TV film, right? And then before that, we had The Hills Have Eyes, and we had The Last House on the Left, which were clearly like uh, low-budget indie things. This felt like his first real production. This felt like he had a studio behind him. They were making this for the theater. Mm -hmm. Like, this is the first theater film, uh, you know, with a studio. So it was interesting to see that. And I had seen this before. The only thing that I remembered <laughs> was the Amish or the Hitt Hittites. Hittites. Um, which is what they call them in this. Uh, they do mention that they're like like the Amish, but they make the Amish look like what they say oh. they, they make them look like um uh Something. swingers <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 swingers um now the hittites are not a thing no uh, i looked them up to try to figure this out and they are made up for the film so i'm not honestly sure why <laughs> because the amish ain't ever gonna see this movie they don't <laughs> see movies so i don't really know why i don't know the amish weren't good enough um <laughs> the amish weren't good enough yeah yeah i don't know they had to make up some some version of them. Um, so, I did not like this film on my first viewing. Uh, I barely remembered it. And I was real curious to come back to any of these movies that I haven't liked in the past to give them their fair shot once <laughs> and for all. Um, and I am happy to say that I actually really enjoyed this one. Mm -hmm. I think that um, there are some lulls in this film. But the last, like, 15 minutes is insane, <laughs> and I loved it. Yeah. Like, if the whole last <laughs> act was this whole film, I'd be singing this whole film's praises. Sure. But I, I, I do, and I will get into it for sure. But, man, I like this way more. Way more. I hated it the first time. I was not into it at all. Yeah. But this time, I was, I, was, I was into it. And then the last, like, 12, 15 minutes, I was like, I don't remember any of this, and this is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I had a good time watching it. I definitely enjoyed it, and uh, I mean, we'll talk about it, but yeah. We sure will. So, we've got familiar faces and names in here. Uh, the most familiar and obvious face that anyone would spot, uh, no matter who they were, is Sharon Stone, who plays Lana. Uh, the friend of Martha who comes to console her after the death of her husband. <laughs> um, and then we also have Ernest Borgnine in here who, shit, I've grown up with, whether it be Escape from New York or the Poseidon Adventure or whatever. Uh, I always love seeing him and he's a much different character in this. And once again, I have to... I have to do this. I have to give a big middle finger to the Razzies because they're really just, I don't know. It's funny. The, the Razzies are this, uh, the anti Academy awards and mm. they exist to point out the worst performances of the year as we know. Um, and there's been a lot of like, cause they're, they're fart sniffers. Just like the Academy can be, right? Yeah. They're very much like, my opinion is is king, and I'm going to tell you what's bad, and, and then the other side's like, I'm going to tell you what's good. Yeah. Right? Um, there's The balance is always off. And and the Razzies are, are, are all over the place and, and wrong all the time for me, um, in my opinion. But they gave Ernest Borgnine a Worst Actor nomination for this movie. Oh. Or Worst supporting actor i think he played this part perfectly yeah I he's an asshole no freaking cult leader psych yeah. religious fanatic psychopath and he plays it wonderfully yeah so I, the I fact that no he was nominated for a razzie for this crazy to How me weird yeah i would not think that he had a, a poor performance in this for his role no that's bizarre super mm -hmm. weird so fuck them on that <laughs> one. They're dead wrong. Yeah. Um, and James Horner uh, was the composer of the music in this, who went mm. on to, you know, compose Titanic and Avatar, and 
I mean, you can go down his list, whether it's aliens or, I mean, this dude has done so much. He's one of the major, I mean, I put him in the top 10 biggest composers, like when it comes to the big blockbuster name uh, composers. Mm -hmm. Horner is like up there, you know, he's, he's high, high up there. You know, John Williams, of course, would be like number one. I'd be hard pressed to find a more prolific composer than John Williams. Um, but Horner, I mean, I'd say, you know, at least top 10, top 20, somewhere in that area, like of, of the more like uh, bigger names, influential, whatever. So really interesting to see. They always have to start somewhere, right? Of course. Um, yeah. it's, so it's, it's cool to see his name here. And, um, you know, you, you, you can always spot uh, specific composers work. Because they have a very specific sound mm. that they that they bring out of their music. Like I can mm-hmm. always tell when it's Danny Elfman. Oh yeah. I can always tell when it's John Williams. I can always tell when it's certain composers. Um, and Horner is actually someone who I've been able to spot in the past because he does a lot of music that sounds like Titanic, mm. right? Mm-hmm. Same thing with the composer of, of like Lord of the Rings and yeah. stuff like that. Like you. you you know, you, you start to hear these very specific tones that they yeah. bring. So um, I was listening for them here, but this one actually had music and it makes sense because this is 1981 and Friday the 13th came out in 80. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a, bu- there's a bunch of scenes where the music, like when Sharon Stone is in the, in the barn mm, and, and right. she's being kind of stocked, they have those like strings that are like long strings, very, you know, uh, Bernard Herman, I think, is the name of the produ- uh, composer, right, of, of Psycho, um, mm. which Harry Manfredini, who did Friday the Thirteenth, has admitted to ripping off. Um, so I, I guess I should um, credit Bernard more right. than than Harry Manfredini. But M- Manfredini had just done, uh, you know, Friday the Thirteenth just recently, so I'm sure Horner probably saw it. The music is very reminiscent in those scenes. Just a. Like, Mm-hmm. Like you can hear that was a terrible, <laughs> terrible <laughs> in- imitation. I, how do you make a string sound with your know. mouth? I don't even know why I attempted it <laughs> because I'm a clown. That's why. Um, so, what do you think of this film? I, li- I mean, yeah, I liked it. I, um, I will. I, I think I told you my ranking for the movies, not including like Scream and Nightmare. For my my Wes Craven movies that we've this watched, watch through this watch thus far, it, I go Summer, Summer of Fear. Fear, Deadly Blessing, The Hills Have Eyes, and Last House on the Left from best to worst. I'm the same switch, but you switch Summer of Fear and Deadly Blessing. Yes, this is my so, favorite of the four so far. Yeah, but I think it's you know it obviously feels very. Um, like sleepaway camp kind of vibes, oh, of you know, for sure, which end, we'll talk obviously. about. But I, yeah, I thought the ending was crazy. There's a shot in the end where, because um, we're talking spoilers, obviously, her dead husband's like ghost appears to her, and I actually thought he was really creepy, and it it freaked me out quite a bit the way that he was shot and like fading into the scene and his eyes and everything. And I thought he was really scary. And, of course, the ending was, like, very memorable. Um, <laughs> not for me, obviously. But not for you, but for From me, now I mean, on, it was it memorable. Um, but, I don't, yeah, I, I thought that there was a lot of intrigue and, like, you know, we were very, especially because you couldn't remember, like, who had, who was the killer or who did what. Yeah. There's, like, so many people that you're suspicious of. So I liked that, that you're kind of like, well, it could have been... I said it was the painter girl from like 10 minutes in. Yeah, but then there's also... <laughs> and like I was on it the, the whole There's film. the Hittites and like, yeah. and there's the mom and there's her and just, yeah. The I, Hittites were too obvious. But I mean, they were I, but there I get what you're saying. and there was definitely like some weird stuff going on with them. So I, I just liked all the drama around that. I liked... Her friend that came and was like the the jogger girl that like, kind of had this relationship with one of the Hittite boys, the brother of of Martha. What's her name? Martha's husband. Well, John. <laughs> John. John's right. brother. That's there. I the thought you were. I thought here. you were gonna say yeah. I thought you were saying the brother of uh, freaking um, Reagan. Yeah, he's a brother in both movies. Yeah. But I liked, you know, that kind of drama where he's, like, attracted to her, and but he's going to marry his cousin, and all of that stuff was like, oh, man. <laughs> um, I actually found her other friend, 
Sharon Stone, she was kind of making me laugh throughout because I really felt like she didn't have a whole lot of purpose to the to the film. I felt like she kind of came there and mostly was just sleeping and drunk, like, m for the majority of it. Like, after everything happens to her in the barn, she's just kind of there and is, like, always has a glass of wine or some alcohol and then she's sleeping. <laughs> we do get some interesting dream sequences with her yeah. where there's a lot of, like, like um symbolism to spiders yes and i'm not really sure what yeah. that is it's like you know you're gonna be caught in this web and you're this you know you're the prey and mm -hmm. the spider is always looming and kind of like invisible because mm -hmm. like he he zooms in on this shot where mm -hmm. she doesn't see a spider and then the web kind of comes into focus cool. and that's almost like you know the succubus or the incubus yeah. sorry the incubus in the end, the women would be a succubus, and they keep referring to them as incubus. But they're saying that they're the, like the uh, messenger. messenger of the incubus, yeah. and we actually do get to see an actual incubus at the end of this film. Yeah. Um, but I thought that was kind of cool yeah. how that um, we do have this looming threat that you can't see, and then it can kind of come into frame mm -hmm. or into focus, like the spider. So it's it, the, the spider is almost like... Um, you know, a, a metaphor for the the uh, incubus at the end. Sure, which yeah. Is hidden in plain sight, right? And, and appears when it wants to, uh, you know, attack. Yeah. So. Yeah. You know, yeah, but I agree. Right. I, I think Lana is um, just kind of there. <laughs> uh, I don't know why she doesn't leave after she's attacked and then has a dead body uh, of Michael Berryman. Um, from the hills have eyes uh, thrown at her, you would be. I think. I think she would have. I think every she'd be like, "I'm gonna go." To and <laughs> I, know your I don't think died, but... anybody could blame her. No. Um, for that. Yeah. So. She's a good friend, so she's like, "I'm gonna stay here with you." Yeah. Uh, the the brother in this um, that that plays is is um, you know he's he's the love interest of Vicky. Mm -hmm. Um, he, uh, his name is, his name is John and then oh. Jim is the husband and oh, Jim okay. is, is like, he's so late in the end, uh, <laughs> oh to the party. But, uh, John is, um, he's also not only in Summer of Fear, as you'd said, as, uh, Linda Blair's brother in the movie, mm -hmm. uh, who also is going for his cousin. Yeah, so I think what's he's getting the, cast in he, these roles. Yeah, the like, cousin fucker. Cousin. <laughs> Shut your fucking face, Uncle Fucker. Um, <laughs> yeah, cousin fucker. That's what that's his role here. Yes. Um, he's also plays young Car Clark Kent in the Superman movie. Oh. Mm -hmm. hmm. So that's, that's where nice. I've seen him before. I see. But uh, yeah, I, I just put that together that he's going after his cousin. Yeah, in both, both movies. movies back to back and. Hmm. They actually go to the movies, uh, and he goes to uh, meet Vicky after he's pushed out by Isaiah mm -hmm. from the Hittites. And when he goes to uh, approach her and, and go to the movie that she invited him to, which is not Godzilla versus Lassie, yeah. like she had said, right. uh, it is actually Summer okay. of Fear, which is up cute. on the marquee. And we have posters, the exact poster from the film. So it's not a different summer affair. It is the exact summer affair. summer affair. She should have came out of that movie and been like, you look a lot yeah. like this guy. <laughs> that was in, in that movie. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, so. <laughs> that was a cute reference. Yes. Um, and, you know, I, poor Melissa. You know, Melissa is, is the cousin in this that, that um, John is supposed to marry. And... Jim left, right, to be with Martha. Right. And it was like, okay, one cousin bailed. So here's the other cousin. And then the other cousin bails on her for Martha's friend, Vicky. Yeah. It's like this poor chick, she's being set up with cousin after cousin, and they keep bailing on her for, you know, some, some freaking uh, harlot. For some right? harlot, yeah. yeah. Je some Jezebel. <laughs> some Jezebel. You know about Jezebel? <laughs> yeah, she's got bad luck with cousins, so she should probably stop trying trying to get married to them. Probably yes. probably for the best. Yeah. Um 
The only thing I really didn't like about the ending is sorry what I told you, and this is my bias towards uh, organized cult religions like mm. this, is that the Hittites are the are right. Right. Yeah. And I don't they're like correct. that. <laughs> I don't like that. Sure. I don't like that they're that their fear driven propagandic bullshit happens to be correct. I know. It's it is like, kind of yeah. I don't want Isaiah, Isaiah to be Isaiah, right. Yeah. Isaiah. <laughs> I don't want him to be correct. No, of course not. Yeah, I, I didn't like that they were ultimately right in the end either, but I don't know, I guess That's the world that's they live the world in. That, yeah. yeah, it is what it is. What can you <laughs> do? Um I really like the paintings that um faith is doing me too in these. me too um they're they're like this warped reality mm -hmm. she's she's showing like the the house uh the um the the farmhouse uh, -huh. uh and i think it's like the barn. the barn yeah and they're like warped and this actually kind of mirrors her warped perception yeah. of the world so i really like that imagery contrasted um or with uh, her mental state. Yeah. So I thought that that was really cool. Um, and then, um, but like, and then we get all this stuff with Louisa, uh, Faith's mother, who drops this real, like, kind of questionable line. And, and we, I think there was a movie we watched recently where this happened too. And maybe you'll remember what the hell I'm talking about. But in this, Louisa, like, very casually drops on, I think it, I think it's Vicky that she says it to. But she's talking about how, you know, she hates men. Uh -huh. And that if her daughter was born a man, she would have put it in a sack and thrown it into the creek like you do with kittens. Which, yes. Of course, number one. Ew. No. You don't kill kittens, A. No. You don't throw them in the creek, too. That's like the most evil thing you can do. And and three, you're outright admitting that if your baby was born a different sex, you would have killed it. Yeah, like what? <laughs> right? So messed up. I don't know. She says it so casually, too. And like, there's she not says really like any a, reaction. Like, it's funny. Yeah. She does kind of say it like it's funny. But yeah. there's no reaction or like response. I think she from... might actually be saying it to Martha, Lana, and Vicky. I think she's saying it to like all three of them. It might be. I can't really remember. In fact, she is. She all is because them. she comes in and she's she's talking to them about the eggs. And oh, she's like, right. oh, yeah, she yeah. brought us eggs. And she's like, that's where they all went. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we find out that um, Faith killed all those chickens that laid the eggs and stuffed Jim's coffin with them. Yes. Right? Which, Which is, is, of course, like... killing like fertility of course um, the yeah. idea of womanhood yeah, mm -hmm. and like because now she's you know admitting that she wants to admit that she's a man yeah right and she's she's killing birth uh brain givers <laughs> yeah right she's, egg givers yeah. yeah yeah um so this is almost like symbolic of how she feels about her Girl. womanhood oh, she's yeah. she's she's rejecting, you know, rejecting it, that notion and she's killing that part of herself totally. and because and there is this really interesting dynamic where louise hates men because her husband ditched out on her so now she takes it out on all men she hates men and she hates the hittites mm -hmm. um, mostly probably because the hittites are um you know this uh you know this Patriarchal. religion yeah it's a patriarch yeah. thank you i was struggling in that word uh, patriarchal uh, society uh -huh. where men rule and women are subservient and uh, men have the ultimate uh, last word or all the words. Oh, yeah, every word. Every word. Uh -huh. uh, and are in complete control and charge. So it makes perfect sense she would hate them um, as anybody should in a society like that. Um, but she, she actually has a crush on Jim. This is very apparent. When he pulls up on the tractor mm -hmm. after, uh, and, 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 um, Michael Berryman's character, um, I, I don't know if I wrote I his name down his or name not. Um, but he's like simple minded, right? And they're all just like, oh, you know, he's, he's an idiot. He's whatever. Uh, but he's right. You know, he, he, from the get, <laughs> from the beginning, yeah. he's like, he's chasing yes. uh, Faith around and he's like, Incubus, he Incubus, knows. he knows, <laughs> he freaking knows, he is correct, she That's is, right. she is the messenger of the Incubus, yeah, so it is funny that he's telling us 
the <laughs> audience. The like he's trying to tell everybody, she's the incubus, yes. right? She's she's with the incubuses. I think is what he keeps saying. Oh, but um, he's absolutely correct. But anyways, chases him off. The mom comes up. Louisa comes up. She's talking to Jim, and Jim is like, you know, hey, you know, what's going on? She talks to him. She clearly has a thing for him. Ultimately, and 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 the, uh, I should say on the flip side of that, Faith is in love with Martha. Yeah. Right, because uh, Faith is a man. Right. Um, she's been made a woman by her mother. Yeah. Um, so this is not trans. This is forced cross dressing. Yeah. Very much like Angela. Yes. In Sleepaway Camp. Yeah. Spoilers for that if you haven't seen it. <laughs> um. But yeah, it's a very interesting uh, dynamic because Faith is in love with uh, the, the wife mm-hmm. and Louisa is clearly is into the dad and um, both of them have very negative reactions to their feelings on this and, and feel rejected or, or, or want to do something to um, you know, rectify this issue. Mm-hmm. And it's very interesting because we can't get a clear cut answer because this is almost like a prototype for Scream, even though Kevin Williamson mm. wrote that, um, we do get this the double duel. killer, but it's like Scream with a supernatural twist. Right. Where if you had Billy and uh, Stu mm-hmm. and also the devil. <laughs> yeah, Billy, right? Stu, Billy and Stu and the devil makes three. <laughs> right? That would be like how this movie plays out where you have Faith and you have Louisa and they're the killers. Right. But then the incubus also is there. Yeah. And we see Jim get killed by the tractor, but it you never see the person who does it. And you see like the the gears and everything kind of release on their own. So I don't know if it was Louisa that killed him that or Faith killed him yeah. or the incubus that did it or was controlling them to right. do it or what I don't have any idea who killed no. Jim but my guess would be Louisa but I don't know or it could be but they all have they all have reason Sure that I all have motive yeah. Faith wants his wife Right Louisa wants him dead because she's into him and doesn't want to be Right and the incubus is evil. <laughs> <laughs> is evil. Is evil. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know actually who kills who in this. Like I, I know that obviously Faith and Louisa and the incubus are all at play. So it's kind of like, it's definitely left open. I felt unless I missed something where someone like specific, but I don't think that's ever specifically said. Mm. Like who kills who. We do get some uh, giallo uh flavor in here with black gloves and a shiny knife yes you know and a faceless yeah. killer and, uh-huh. and like a hood um so very very reminiscent and that would be of course um very prevalent in 1981 a lot mm-hmm. of giallos had been released at that point um or giallis i think giallis. is the way to say it when you pluralize it sorry <laughs> i'm uncultured swine um but yeah, I, I thought I'd, I'd definitely point that out. Um, we this is for all intents and purposes a slasher. Yes, it is actually. Right? Yeah. It's a slasher with a supernatural twist in the yeah. end. So yeah. Ver, um, his first slasher, mm. and um, I actually prefer this to Scream. <laughs> <laughs> you guys know I don't like Scream. Oh, Anyways, dude. yeah, I definitely don't feel that I, way I know, at I know, all. I know, I know. That's okay. That's fine. Um and. Yeah, let's see. Um, yeah, the, the the fact that Lana doesn't end up leaving is, is crazy to me. Mm-hmm. Um, Martha takes the steamiest bath I've ever seen in film. Oh, I know. It's you can't even like see. <laughs> thick clouds. Speaking of prototype scenes or moments, oh, sure. this is a thousand percent um, a prototype for what he would do in Nightmare on Elm Street. Yes. Freaking three years later. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the bathtub scene yes. where we get a shot between her legs. Uh-huh. Um, the camera could have panned down just a little bit more <laughs> and watch the snake enter her. Um, <laughs> um, and yeah. Oh, I like when, I like when the Hittites are going around and they're putting this like, um, they're, they're get, you know how they pass around the collection hat 
or collection right. box yeah. in 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 the church. In this one, it's like a confession box. Yeah. And if anyone wants to like throw a confession in there, mm -hmm. this freaking dude like pulls his hat down, takes the confession out, throws it in there, and rats out his buddy that's sitting right next to yes. him. Yes. <laughs> yes, I know. He's like. He's like, well, it's not about you. <laughs> it's so awkward. I thought he was going to open it up and be like, Harry Potter. Harry Potter. <laughs> Harry Potter. Where is Harry Potter? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, he was holding it. <laughs> um, and let's see. Uh, oh, I love, yeah. I love how Isaiah is like, you know, when, he, when he's beating on Jim with a switch that he's made, he's just like, you won't let me hit you? Oh, go to hell. 100%. Get out of this yes. family and go to hell. Like How you're... dare you not let me beat you? Oh my and God. And he says the same shit to Melissa. It's basically like, you know, stop doing what you're doing and go bang your cousin. Yeah. Yeah. Or I think, no, I'm thinking of with John. Like, he tells him to go when he's to talking his, to, like, when he's talking, whatever. yeah, to Vicky before yeah. that. Oh, yeah. It's mm -hmm. like, no, don't do that. <laughs> You are going to bang your cousin. That's what you're going to do. He's like, I don't want to. And he near rapes uh, Melissa. He does. In a fit because he's like. I'm supposed he, to be doing He's turned this. on by Vicky, right? Vicky yes. is. She's, she's uh, you know, a succubus. She's trying. Because that's what this film <laughs> is about, right? Great. A succubus is about. An incubus and a succubus are, are, are primarily. Their tools are sexuality. Yeah. They're, they're trying to. Um, bring you in with their sexuality to corrupt and, and ultimately, um, you know, Damn drag your soul. you to hell. <laughs> yes. yes. And um, Vicky is a representation of a succubus in their culture. Sure. She's out there. She's this, she, she's this whore who's right. bringing him away from the grace of God. And he's like, go run to your whore. Like, you're yeah. done in this place. She's won. She, the succubus has won. Right? Uh, they never mention the succubus in this, but the succubus is just a female incubus. Yeah. Um, but yeah. We get the love triangle here and, and just heavy sexual repression, which is what this film is really showcasing, mm -hmm. is the sexual repression of, of telling you know kids that they can't uh, be kids and enjoy themselves. Sure. Yeah. Um, and you don't have to marry your cousin. <laughs> you don't have to. You shouldn't. You shouldn't have to. Um, the poster definitely does um, more of a job trying to sell this film in a sexual way yeah. than the actual representation in the film. Sharon Stone's character, Alana, uh, has the heads on her uh, hands on her head, uh -huh. uh, but she's wearing a nightie that completely covers her from like neck down. Mm -hmm. And on the poster, we get the exact same imagery, except for the top is cut like. This, yeah, it's like super V cut. Like nipples are like, you know, like right there. Been excised out <laughs> of the picture because there's like no way you could have a cut top like that without showing something. <laughs> um, so it is funny to see that and then see the poster and it's mm -hmm. like, you know what? Oh. Like, you know who you know who designed that poster? A man. The Incubus. The Incubus. The Incubus yeah. did that. He one. did. He was like, we're going to bring him into the theater. Mm -hmm. I love how Vicky is so horny for this Hittite dude that she lets him drive her Mustang. Oh my gosh, he I know. She near wrecks it into a tree, actually does hit the tree a little yes. bit. And she just laughs and is like, let's fuck. Oh my God. She's like, you did fine for your first time. You're dude, like, he what? Like they go over the like these like hills where he's just like you, flying down. You know what it reminded me so of? It crazy. reminded me of the scene in the Jackass movie when the guys are freaking uh, driving the golf carts and they like are like driving them off of jumps and shit. No. That's what it felt like to me. Just like <laughs> completely careless, insane driving. Yeah. And she's like, ha ha. Like, She's so fine with you it. You own this car. This isn't a joyride. You didn't steal no. this car. Yeah, like this is your you're gonna car. You're going to have damage to yes. the whatever the mustangs tires. were not meant to go off-roading no <laughs> definitely not <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's pretty funny it's ridiculous um and let's see uh yeah the the ghost as kaylee said uh jim's ghost 
He is late to the party. He's so late, and he's like shows up and gives her a warning, and yeah. then literally like the next second, the incubus comes and takes her. Yeah, she has no time to actually heed his warning at all. None, zero. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why Eddie come, Johnny come lately, uh, <laughs> Jimmy come lately. Yeah. Um, you got Melissa who kind of saves the day, right? Um, she's the one that stabs. Um, faith in the back mm. and ultimately dispatches of the incubus's uh, messenger mm -hmm. and Isaiah breaks through the door both of them come at exactly the right moment of course and he's like no you know we knew who it was she's dead let's move on mm -hmm. and then the incubus comes for her come in I, I love the way the incubus rips through the floor grabs mm -hmm. her pulls her into hell and then they do this reverse yes. shot where all the boards come back down and the lights come in the room yeah like the lights dim breaks through grabs her pulls her down it reforms and the lights come up and just credits yeah it's a really really dark ending it is i loved that though i thought the effect was really cool and the red coming up from the floorboards and everything yeah i loved that i thought that was really cool but melissa was committed she was like you know while i'm here and i have a knife i might as well kill you too yeah yeah she's still coming at her she's like possessed in that moment like I like murder. I like murder. I like murder. I think I'm going to keep committing it. Yeah. And then Isaiah's like, that ain't the way. And she's like, this isn't the way. This and she throws it away. Mm -hmm. And she moves away. Uh, <laughs> speaking of Flawed throwing away. things to the side, uh, Martha shoots Louisa like once through the window and then just throws the gun away. Oh my gosh. I Literally know. just I like know. throws it. And I'm that like. That was so silly. Like why? You There's another killer. Yeah. Why are, what are you doing? Don't give up your gun. Don't give up your weapon. Like, at least with Laurie Strode stabbing Michael and then throwing down the knife, like, she's only ever seen one killer and she right. just stabbed him through the chest, so she's pretty much convinced he's dead. Sure. Like, Faith is still out there. Yes. She might think something happened or whatever, but, like, you're not sure, so just shooting. Even, like, you don't even, even know if Louise is dead. Right. Right? Yes. Yeah. So, the fact that she just, like, shoots it and throws it away. She doesn't even, like, shoot it and then... Because she fires it a couple other times. Mm -hmm. So, like, it could be empty. But, like, why? Why wouldn't you, like... Maybe I could understand if she, like, tries to, like, point it at her again and pulls the trigger and it clicks. And she's like, I don't have any bullets. And sure, she throws it away. It, but but I'm pretty sure happen. she still had a bullet or two left. I thought so as well. So, the fact that she just kind of shoots it and then, like... It's almost like she's, like, disgusted by her actions. Mm. right or she's mm -hmm. like so like oh my god what the hell did i just do mm. yeah yeah but this is a fun one yeah <laughs> it was yeah i enjoyed it for but sure I, I enjoyed it and of course as always it's on tubi yay yeah, yeah good old good. tubi good. and the next one's on tubi and the yay. next one's on tubi so watch a bunch on tubi sure can so there you go deadly blessing you have our blessing to, to watch, watch it deadly blessing yep yeah. <laughs>